the name of Jesus, we release your glory, your anointing, your spirit in this house today. We captivate the souls, the minds, the ears uh, of every believer who will sit in this environment. And we ask that everyone will be anointed to hear what the Spirit has to say. Lord Jesus, go from our foot to our head and our head to our foot today with your power. Make us whole. Make us well. Make us alive. Make us strengthened. Uh, in the name of Jesus today, lift up every person who comes in this house today. God, don't let nobody leave here with a downcast spirit. But if they do feel down, lift them up. Pick them up. Inspire them. My Lord, give them great utterance and inspiration from the breath of the Almighty today. And let them feel the lifting power of the Holy Ghost. Heal the sick. Minister by your gifts. Let us see in the supernatural. Let us hear in the supernatural. Let every person today experience the miraculous power of God as it moves and works in our midst. Glory to God. Let the word come forth with demonstration and with power. God give us the tongue of the pen of the ready writer and let us speak as the oracles of God as it was said that men of old spake with the Holy Ghost which was sent down from heaven. Hallelujah. Let every vessel be filled. Lord Jesus, may they be brought in today, not a few, but many, and may all of them be filled to the overflowing in Jesus' name. We just thank you for a day of victory. We thank you that tonight when our guest ministers come in, they too will sense the power and the presence of God and that you will anoint them to just flow in your anointing and your power. We thank you today that this is the day the Lord hath made. We make the choice. We will rejoice and be glad in your presence today. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. God bless you this morning. Praise the Lord. And turn to Ephesians 1. So I'm going to read, uh, start in verse 16. And it says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation and the knowledge of Him, having the eyes of our hearts enlightened that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and that what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he was raised from the dead and seated at him at the right hand in heavenly places. Hallelujah. This morning I want to talk to you about being hidden within. Hallelujah. Just continuing our talk about having the mysteries. Hallelujah. And just so thankful and so expecting that in these last few services that we've had, because we've become one in unity and seeking the glory of the Lord, that it's come to the point that there have been prophecies both individually and both corporately and congregational coming forth to the point that pastor he goes to preach and he can't even because of the glory and the revelation that's coming through 
and you know, it really impressed upon me the last one of the last words that came in the Wednesday night, and it's been said more than once that we would see a an increase, an acceleration of the revelation gifts. And in case you forgot what those were, those are the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, and the discerning of spirit. Hallelujah. And you have to realize that you are the city set on the hill, hidden within the ivory palaces among God's throne, ready to continuously reveal his mysteries upon you. You know, we read many times of Ruth Ward Heflin, and there are, in her very first book that was published, Glory, there's a very, very profound statement that she puts in there that praise brings worship, worship brings the glory, and the glory brings revelation. And there was one time I was reading in Harvest Glory a couple of weeks ago, and there was one time, see, she thought that the glory of the Lord, it had only been manifested within the tent meetings that she had been in in West Virginia. And it was just in a certain denomination. And it, she said she didn't mean to, but in her mind, she thought at first that this was only intended for the Pentecostal realm. And as they would have their prayer meetings, there was a she would put Pentecostal prayer meetings. And she said that she felt ashamed for even putting that because they were doing more dancing and more praising and more worshiping God as the glory would come in. And she, even to the point that she looked around and realized there were fewer Pentecostal denomination than the others. She said there were Catholics and there were Baptists, and there were evangelical people there, and there were Jewish people there, and there were even some that didn't even have a denomination. She realized that the glory of the Lord is not only interdenominational, but it goes beyond any denomination. Hallelujah. Because we know when we confound ourselves in a denomination, we get ourselves stuck to the traditions of men and the religion of men, and that's not the purpose of the kingdom of the Lord. For it's in us in unity and that we have revelation of who we are in Christ. The Lord says, I speak to you of mystery and that the mystery be revealed. And the Lord is revealing his mysteries unto us as we become more and more hidden in him. It's when we get deeper into the spirit and into the secret place of him and get into the holy and holies of him that this revelation is revealed even back in the Levitical law where the priests were you know the pastor said you know a lot of times people thought that they just opened up a piece of the veil and they just walked in but as you got to study that those priests did not go through the veil but yet they were translated over into the realm of the holy of holies and that was where they got the revelation for the people because they sought the Lord and they believed in the Lord you know, this morning I was listening um, to Jerry Savelle and his, his daughter, Jerry Ann, was on there. And she was telling of her father that uh, he had just become a Christian and he was going to Kenneth Copeland's meetings. And he was starting to, you know, do I really believe in healing? Do I really believe that of the full glory, the full manifestation of the Lord? And while they were sitting in a meeting, a nursery worker came in with his youngest daughter, Terry, and there was blood all over her. And his daughter, somehow in the nursery, they don't know how it happened, but all of her fingers were cut off. And the nursery worker came to him and handed him Terry. And he said, you know, that was almost a test of my faith. Do I really believe what I believe? And he took Terry and he took her to the bathroom and began washing her hand and praying over her. And the nursery worker knocked on the door and handed him, he said, I found the fingers, and handed him the fingers. And he just believed, and it was uh, very similar to that case that you've heard pastors say many times about the little girl with a finger, and don't get it wet. And then she got a plane in there, and her finger fell off. And her grandmother said, oh, honey, you let your finger 
fall off and get and get wet and she said that's okay jesus gave me another finger well it was the very much same situation the lord miraculously let all those fingers come together and she has her fingers today because i've seen i've seen her from time to time she just worships and there's nothing wrong with her fingers and you see the lord was showing jerry that what he had done is right and you know even though there, she kept speaking on that there's many people that think that the Lord has allowed all these bad things to happen to them. But that we just live, it says that we live in a time that there will be tribulation, but God is only a good God. And he only seeks good things before you. And when you get into the revelation and the mystery of him, you realize how much his goodness is upon you. And how much his favor is upon you. And how much he wants to bestow his abundance and his love and his healing and his wholeness upon you. For when you become hidden within, he... It realizes that the only way to bring revelation and the answer to everything in your life and into this church's atmosphere is to be continuously immersed in the glory realm. Nothing can be conjured up by the works of the flesh because we are Him, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And all about Him and of Him. Hallelujah. This is why that when we enter this place, it is so vitally important that you lay aside all the things of life in the day or the week or the year and tune into the spirit and the worship and the word of the Lord and listen to the heavenlies and the mysteries being revealed. You know, there used to be people, well, even today, but especially, I almost used to be persecuted in high school because, you know, people would know situations going on in our family's life. And they would say, how can this be going on in your life and yet you can walk into the church with a smile on your face? But you see, that's what we were always taught. April said that last week. We were expected. We were told, I don't care what's going on. You could be arguing with each other in the car on the way to church, but when you walk in this place, you better put this place, you better put a smile on your face and act like everything's hunky dory. And that was him telling us, you know what? The spirit and the anointing and the revelation is more important than what the little things that are going on in your life. You know, Jesus said it's just a waves tossed in the sea, but he caused the sea to be calm. And there is a power in that. You know, I, I once heard Creflo Dollar that he really wanted to go play tennis. And Jackie said, Creflo, it says on the forecast that there's going to be these really bad thunderstorms. I don't know what you're going to go do with that tennis because it's going to just be pouring rain. And she said, maybe in your world, but not in mine. And he just thanked the Lord that there would be good weather. And he went and played tennis. And it was the sunniest day. He played tennis with his friend, and he came back, and Taffy goes, Creflo, where have you been? I told you, I bet you, you got caught in that storm. He goes, what are you talking about? She goes, it was just a pouring and thundering and lightning, and nobody could do anything. And he goes, well, it was just the sunniest to be where I am, because you know there is life and death and the power of the tongue. And you see, when we have those mysteries revealed to us of who he is in us, we are given the power. Hallelujah. The Lord said that you would do more, far beyond more, than what he ever done in this world. And it says in the word that there were so many miracles and healings and revelations that Jesus brought forth that it couldn't even be numbered or recorded in the word. And, you know, I, what happened in all these past times of... You know, there was the latter rain movement and there was Azusa Street. And yes, those were appointed times, times of healing. They were miraculous. But there should be just as much and more happening now. There are literally people, it's sad, that they literally think that in this day and age, there aren't any more miracles. There aren't any more healings because they don't believe. You know, it says, I believe it's 2 Corinthians 3, 3 that the letter of the law killeth. And they're just believing in the letter of the law. 
They're not mixing the spirit with the word together. Because you're never going to understand this word unless you read it through the eyes of the spirit. Hallelujah. You see, that's what gives us the revelation and the mysteries that are so vitally important to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm just believing that it's just going to continue to manifest. That what these new realms of the supernatural are going to be brought forth is that it's going to cause such an ease. You know, there's people that think that bringing forth the glory of God in a service is such a hard thing, but it's not. It's all getting past this flesh mind and entering the spirit mind. If you would allow your mind to be open up to the spirit, some of you would almost be run away, ready to run out the windows. But the Lord wants you to see that. He wants you to see that how close heaven is into this world. You know, it said that there's over thousands of times that the word heaven is used in the word. And that heaven, it comes together in this world. It says that they cannot, in Hebrews 12, that they cannot live without us. And we cannot live without them. You know, there was one time I was, it's when we had a Thursday night prayer meeting. And there, I had done something to my leg, and it hurt so bad. And pastor said, you know, we need to dance. Well, I couldn't hardly dance. I couldn't hardly dance in the physical, but in the spirit, I was dancing. And this almost blow your mind. But while I was there, my nana, see, she was one that when she got the spirit of revelation on her, she would like, get up in your face. Because she was so confident in what she said. And I had said to myself, I wish that I could dance. And at that time, she got up in my face in the spirit. And she said, when you can't dance in the physical, we will dance for you in the supernatural. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And she danced. And she danced in me and she danced around me. And it was but a couple of days. That, that healing brought forth. It was a gradual healing in my leg. And I dance. And that's what you have to do. You know, Ruth Ward Heflin says that when you dance, you're bringing forth nations. And sometimes the nations are physical nations of this world. And sometimes we are the nations. It's people that you're dancing forth and you're bringing in. So don't stop dancing and don't stop letting the glory realm come into this place. It's such a precious thing. Don't let yourself become dead and dried up within. Don't be like the valley of dry bones. Be like Elijah that spoke forth to the dry bones. And he said live because the spirit of the Lord is within us and his breath brings life. So no matter what it is, that's going on that's what brings us and restores us like the eagles as it says in isaiah 40 that our youth is renewed as the eagles and those eagles when they start looking old and tattered and their beak becomes dull and their claws become dull that's when they go to the river and they pluck out all the old and they sharpen the talons and they sharpen the beak and they allow the oil of anointing to come over them and restore to the point that you can't even tell how old that eagle is because when it restores itself, it comes back as a young bird. That's what that verse means. Hallelujah. You know, they're physically, doctors have done a study by people who... Uh, develop dementia or Alzheimer's disease or whatever and they have found that it's from that after you know a lot of people that after they retire or they settle down in the older life they never learn anything new and when they never learn anything new that's when their mind begins to break down hallelujah and you see that's how we are if we never allow ourselves to go into the new that's where we become physically dead. That we start losing the memory of who we are in Christ. And that's where it said, Paul said that we have to die daily and to allow our mind to be renewed daily in Christ. Hallelujah, that we don't just keep it up. I don't know about you, 
but on the word of my forefathers is not enough for this day. It is the revelation of the Lord and the newness of everything that causes me to yearn for more, to expect more, because there is so much more that can come. You see, we're the remnant. There's many people that over and over, if you listen to certain preachers, they don't even have revelation of what the rapture is. Hallelujah. They still believe in that that happened with that girl where she had that delusional from a fever and she saw people just like a naked rapture. When instead we're raptured up in the spirit and the glory of the Lord. They don't have any idea of who Satan really is. That he's a defeated foe. That it's an enemy in your mind that's a hissing in your mind. They don't have that revelation. They don't even have a revelation of what heaven is. They think it's some fairy island in the sky floating on the clouds. Everybody's eating marshmallows and looking at the sunflowers. They have no idea that if you just peel back the veil that the Lord shows you heaven within. It's just another realm and it's so much closer than you think. We know that because it was uh, thinking of Brother Oscar. He said when he died, he said, my God, it's so much closer than you think. And he said it was just like a veil was just pushed back and everything was just like diamonds. And it was just there. And it, it, he said it was just mind blowing all the colors and all the saints and everything that was there. Hallelujah, because that's how close it is. That's how close this revelation is upon you. Some of you are just right there on the tip of the surface that you just peel away the layers as you allow the traditions of men to be burned out of you by the spirit that it just brings forth more revelation you know I don't know about you but whoever has experienced the fire of the Lord inside of you and it, you just feel the heat of it and I was we were coming back from the beach uh, the other day on Tuesday and Brianna was with us and Audrey remembered that and there was a day that we were listening to Ken Hagen's services and it was one of those wild ones that were just moving everywhere and I was sitting on the floor of Charlotte's living room and I was like my god it's so hot I feel like fire is just on my legs it must be this floor this floor must be hot and I, I didn't at first realize it was the spirit, really what it was. It was the flames of the spirit coming up. So I got up and I sat on the couch by Heather. And Heather goes, Megan, what did you just do? She goes, it feels like there's just flames coming up on my leg. And the spirit is there and it's so strong. And, I, and she's like, it's getting so hot. And we were getting so drunk in the spirit. And then it got over on Winnie. And Winnie's like, what in the world have y'all done? And she fell out in the spirit. And Heather said, and it was the same case with me, she said that it stayed like that, coming up her legs like that for four hours. And you see, that's what the Lord wants us to do, that it's the spirit. But some of us are so afraid that we're going to lose control. But it, that's what it is. It's as Rick Manis says, he said, that knowing the revelation of the kingdom of this world is a crazy freak. For there's freedom in the Lord. And it's time for you just to get crazy free. Quit worrying about what other people think. Or you think that you're going to lose control because the Lord is a God of order. And even when I've seen it before, there was one time, uh, I mean, my cousin Jeff and I remember when we were little kids, there was one time that mom took off shouting this way and Charlotte took off shouting that way. And it looked like they were about to just go boom, head first into each other. And somehow when they got by, they both went zoomed one on one side and one on the other. I, I still don't understand how it happens that for the Lord did it because he's a God of order. Yeah. If you will allow yourself the Lord will give you such revelation. He'll allow just heavenly thickness and realms to rest upon you. It's just the most amazing thing. It's happened to me a few times in my life, and I'm ready for it to happen more. That the glory becomes so thick upon us that we can't even converse in English. Hallelujah. That we just get completely drunk because the Lord will reveal his mysteries even more to us. He will show us. He'll give us godly ideas. He'll give us purposes. He will heal us within. And sometimes it's like you don't even realize it. There was one time that I was sitting at the back of that church. 
and I got so drunk in the spirit, I could not speak in English for about three hours. And I did not even realize it, but I had a pain in my hip. And it was like two days later, I realized, oh my goodness, ever since that happened, I, didn't have, I don't have that pain anymore. And you see, that's what the Lord is wanting us to do, is that with this revelation that He not just makes us whole in our mind, in our soul, in our spirit, but He makes us whole in our bodies. That we can, yes, this is just a show, but He can renew us. There are so many people that over and over they see us, and they're like, oh God, you look so young. And all I can say is that it's the life of God within us. Because when you have the life of God within you, you don't think in an old way. You don't see yourself as an old person. Because that's not how God intended you to be. He uh, intended you to have life and life more abundantly. My goodness, the people in the, in the early parts of the Bible... They were living up into their hundreds. I mean, Methuselah was the oldest person up to 969. He almost lived a thousand years. And it was a very uncommon for anyone to die young. When I, was, when I was younger growing up, I just thought everybody, when you reach 60-something, it's time for you to die because almost everybody in my family died in their 60s. Not everyone, but the majority. And I almost thought that was normal. And I went to college, and there was I was uh, placed beside the chaplain my freshman year. And she said, you know, I've never heard you talk about your grandparents. How are they doing? And I said, well, all of them have passed on. And she's like, what? She's like, were they really, really old? Was your, were they really old when they had your mom or something? And I said, no, they were all in their 60s. And they're like, oh, my goodness, that's way too young. All the people in our family die in their 90s. And it started getting me to thinking, you know what? That isn't the promise of the Lord for us to go that young. We're supposed to live as long as the Lord has intended us to be. You know, uh, at that time, it was one of the most devastating uh, happenings of the death. And that was, I had a friend named Gloria. And she was only, she was a little bit older than me, so she was like 26 and she thought her only purpose in life was to go to Africa and do a mission trip. And she had a friend named Rachel who thought the same thing. And that summer before, they both went to Africa and they did a mission trip. And they both, it's like the next year, they all said, well, I know that if I die, I fulfilled my purpose in life. And it wasn't but a month later, they got killed in a head-on car accident. And that their whole family was just kind of in peace because they said they fulfilled their purpose in life. And I don't think the Lord's ever meant for anybody just to fulfill their purpose in life in their 20s. That's the prime of your life. Hallelujah. But it was just sad to me that they just believed that doing one thing for the Lord was just the only thing they were supposed to do. That they didn't understand that it was meant for more and more and more for us to do in this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That let it be manifest. That there, it says in those prophecies that this would be a place of healing. Yeah. That it's been come forth with recent prophecies that this would be a cancer killing sinner. Yeah. That anybody with that terrible C word that believes in that disease would come in here and be delivered of it. And we've seen many, many people come to that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we have to do. In this life is that we believe. You know, I was listening this morning to another preacher, and he said, you know, when in the days of the creation did God create disease or oppression or depression? He said it wasn't until man saw himself incomplete in God that he saw the absence of good and evil. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm going to read a little bit um, from the book Unspeakable Mercy. I'm Michelle O'Donnell about this. says, today I hope to clarify some things that might still need to be clarified. This is to me the pivotal point of healing. This is to me the pivotal point of living in the kingdom of God and out from the kingdom of God all the time. There are or appear to be two realms of consciousness, not a hundred, only two. And in the final analysis, one of them is going to swallow up the other one, and we're going to see there's only one. But for right now, and for the sake of understanding, there are two realms of consciousness. 
God alluded to that when he told us not to partake of the knowledge of good and evil, which is the persistent conflict of good and evil with resultant judgment and failure that puts you in a position of being in strife and conflict under the cloud of condemnation. Quoted from Genesis 2, 17, the day that you partake of this, you shall surely die. Once you begin living under the covering of needing to make judgments of good and evil, these judgments result in a sense of fear, failure, and death. Partake only of life. Partake only of life, and life is with a big capital L-I-F-E. When, you, when we talk about the life, we're talking about a God who is eternal life. We're not talking about what you do for a living. We're talking about God. So there are two distinct realms of consciousness. The realm of good and evil with persistent conflict, pain and suffering, and the realm of our grand and glorious life, or heaven. The Old Testament, starting with the second chapter of Genesis, and throughout all the chapters and books and all the stories, thoroughly depicts the consciousness of good and evil, as well as the consciousness of man trying to understand God by man's own best intellect and, op and efforts. Popping up throughout all these stories and the whole historical account is this consciousness of pure life. It keeps popping up and breaking through and saving the day at the last minute. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, that's what it is, is that because of Jesus <coughs> coming through, we are no longer like Adam after the fall. For that was his whole original plan, that when he allowed Jesus to come upon this earth and say that his grace and his mercy covered everything and he wiped it out. Hallelujah. That's why when we get this revelation of mystery, because this was one thing, I don't know about you, but this is one thing that I had to be revealed about. Is I thought the Lord, oh, he was, I understood him as my good father, but at the same time, I had a mixed revelation. A mixture there that at the same time God was over my head with a baseball bat that any time I felt he was going to beat me down and know and show me that I had to suffer but that's not what the Lord wants you to do that's not being a good Christian to suffer you know there's a lot of us that have that mindset that we have to suffer and we have to have strife and we have to have poverty because it makes us humble that's not humility humility is coming before the throne of grace and laying everything aside and even when we go to show the Lord our sins and our failures, he says, I see them no more. They're on the bottom of the ocean floor. I've wiped them away in the sea of forgetfulness. That's what the humility of the Lord is. That's what this revelation of the Lord is, is that you are a son in God. And you have been given dominion over this earth. And you've been given dominion to prophesy into every single terrible horrible any terrifying circumstance that you have the power to speak it forth for it says in the word that we have there's power of life and death in the tongue but speak life For the Lord would say unto thee that a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. And yea, in this hour I am making my tongue completely whole. For yea, I have put the fire of my Holy Ghost within thy mouth. And as thou speakest forth, as thou worship and prayest unto me, in that wonderful and beautiful tongue that I have anointed thee with, Yea, he saith the Lord, I am creating a whole world of beauty and wholeness and power and strength and might. My tongue shall no longer be used to curse anything or to bring death upon any situation, but I shall cause thy tongue to be filled with power of resurrection and of life. And yea, saith the Lord, as thou speakest these things, uh, the very situations that thou addressest shall be lifted up into a higher realm of living and a higher realm uh, of divine power and of glory, saith the Lord. Thou shalt see that which looks dead and obsolete, dried out and barren, and yet it shall begin to go green and full of life. It shall blossom abundantly and shall bring forth by the multitude, saith the Lord. And yea, that which has been called barren shall be called that which is the mother of many. And therefore this hour, saith God, I shall cause a multiplication to come upon the body of Christ. Yea, ye shall see multiplying on the left and on the right. Everywhere thou shalt look in this hour, you shall see 
see more and more and more and more because I'm putting within thee a whole tongue that will miss or lack nothing of my power but will be filled with my word and with my glory, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. So there's a power hidden within us. And the word where it says, again, life and death are in the power of the tongue. So speak life. And even if there's a time that at first, because sometimes we don't let our spirit come to this mind before we speak. That sometimes this mind, it just is so programmed into the carnal realm that sometimes we speak forth things, but we don't have to accept it. There are many times that sometimes I, when you speak doubting or cursing, that you say, no, Lord, I erase that. I mark it out with the word of God. For your word says, and your word says, and your word says, whenever it's like that. Because it is every day. It's coming forth over this flesh mind and letting the spirit to speak through you and to speak in you and to speak over the situations. There's such a power there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That no matter what it looks like, you know, the, there, there's a, a thing that my Uncle Steve says all the time. Hallelujah. That whenever there's an impossible situation, he's always said, that, well, it looks like a job for El Shaddai. Yeah. Hallelujah. And that's what it is, is that you don't give up, that you allow a tenacity that was within us. That was a thing upon our family, that when the going gets tough, you don't give up. You stand upon the faith of the Lord. And that was how we overcome. But it was almost like a fight. But you see, that's within this. And knowing the purpose of the spoken word in Christ is that he's laying off the suffering. And he's laying off the chore and the work. That it's becoming an ease. And all you have to do is just have faith in God for it to come and pass. And nothing doubting. And nothing wavering. And don't let your tongue and your physical mind defy over what the spirit, because the spirit is greater and it's more powerful. Hallelujah. Because you are a king and a priest. In the days of the old days where it was just kings that ruled over the world, the world, it was what the king said went. Even to the point I remember reading of the Spanish king. And he had a list. So he couldn't always pronounce things right. And he told them, you cannot make fun of me and you're going to talk like me. He made forth a decree. And that's why to this day, if you ever listen between someone of a, another Hispanic country and someone of a Spaniard country, they have a totally different accent and it sounds like they talk with a lisp. It has never changed. Ever since that, that king's ruling, then no one ever changed it. And that's why the country still talks like it today. And you see, that's what it is, is that you will talk of what your spirit is in. It says your, you know, that it's oftentimes it says that your speech betrays you. Your speech goes forth of you. What is within you will allow speech. If you have revelation of who you are in Christ, you will speak truth and you will speak blessing and you will speak peace and you will speak wealth and you will speak happiness and you will speak healing and you will speak wholeness. But if you are one that has a mixture within you, you'll go back and forth. It'll be a battle between your tongue. But that's what the Lord is saying. That's what he just gave in that prophecy that the Lord is allowing, that his spirit is overtaking your tongue to speak life. Hallelujah. There's even to a point, and it's funny, that uh, it's, it's known. And Brianna, she gets the most aggravated about it. But it's known that when we speak about the reigning of the spirit or even just a physical reign, that even if it's not on the forecast, it'll just start raining. Well, last Sunday, I suppose I was up in the living room with her, just meeting with her and stuff. And they had started to talk about the reigning of the spirit down there at the dining room table. And it was not even said to rain. And it started raining. And Brianna had to go be like, okay, y'all. Stop talking about rain. I got somewhere to go, and it's outside, and I need it sunny. So you just stop talking about it. That's how it is that the Lord has made it so powerful that it even affects the physical realm. 
of the situation. And we know that's happened in this church, that whenever a pastor talks about the reigning of the Spirit, it almost always starts raining out on the physical. Hallelujah. And that's what the Lord has commanded us to have, to have dominion over everything that is there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and I'm just going to share just a, a vision that I haven't ever shared before of how close this realm is and how much the Lord wants the veil to come off our eyes on things. But there was, I had a dream, and this was probably about a year ago. And in this dream, I was with my cousin Charity. And we were, uh, this was around the time that we were going on a cruise for my Aunt Phyllis's 60th birthday. But in this dream, is we were by this church, and it was like we were near these ships. And we heard this church, and we went inside. And it was just the most glory and the most worship. And we don't, we don't know who the preacher was, but there was just glory and worship. And we got lost in the worship. And I remember I took my, sh I had on a pair of sandals and I took my shoes off. And I began dancing and I began worshiping for the Lord. And Charity said, Meg, we got to go. And I said, but Charity, I can't find my shoes. So I looked everywhere around and I went up on the stage and I asked, did anybody pick up the shoes? And there was a lady that was there that said, oh, sometimes if they see shoes, they'll put them in this basket behind the curtain right here. And when I went over and pulled back the curtain, instead of finding a basket of shoes, I saw in another service. And the person preaching the service was Catherine Coleman. And it was like everybody in there were all these clouds of witnesses. And she said, oh, you know, she always wore those long sleeves. She said, oh, just come in and join us and worship with us. And I was looking for a seat. And there was a seat there. And my shoes were sitting in it. And behind where my shoes were, there was Evelyn Roberts. And she said, oh, I was waiting for you to pull back the curtain so that you could see that when you worship, you worship with us. And I worshiped in what I thought was for hours. And when I came out, Charity said it had only been two minutes that I had been gone. And that's what the Lord shows us that as we get unveiled and we see the mysteries, that we just get closer and closer for this heavenly realm and the earthly realm, as they say, to kiss one another, to collide with each other. That's what we do when we get into the glory. It's heaven on earth. Hallelujah. And we just praise you today that as we speak forth, that we speak forth life. That the Lord reveals more and more and more to you. Hallelujah. I encourage you to read part of 2 Corinthians 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Lord. We just thank you today that all things are coming forth into your plan. Hallelujah. That all words, that they not just be a word of prophecy laying out in left field, but yet they come closer and closer and that they manifest forth. I'm believing that all those prophecies and all those words that we have typed up, that, that was from December 11, 1988. Oh, over 30 years, now almost 30 years, that they come forth and they manifest into maturity. It's not done. Hallelujah. It's not done. That there is life more abundantly and more precious coming upon us. Hallelujah.